This video will review the typical bleeding procedure for trick stuff hydraulic disc brakes using the Park Tool BKM 1.2 Hydraulic Bleed Kit. For other brands, see our video playlist here. Brake bleeding is primarily done to remove air in your brake system. Additionally, bleeding the brakes will replace contaminated fluid. Brake bleeding requires a thorough technical knowledge of the braking system. If in doubt, or if your procedure is not working, contact the brake manufacturer for their model-specific information. It's important to always use the appropriate brake fluid for the brake being serviced. Never use DOT-type brake fluids in brakes designed for a mineral oil. Conversely, never use mineral oil in brakes designed for DOT fluid. Mixing fluids can cause damage to components and lead to brake failure. Additionally, you should never share bleed kits between DOT fluid systems and mineral oil systems. Typical tools and supplies for this procedure include BKM 1.2 or the BKM 1 with the BKUK, Trick Stuff Bionol or compatible oil for the system, T10 Torx compatible wrench, appropriate hex wrenches, piston press or other suitable tool like a plastic tire lever or the handle of a cone wrench, clean rags, isopropyl alcohol, zip ties, safety glasses, and gloves. Before we get to the procedure, let's identify the key parts on the brake lever and caliper that are used in the bleeding process. The caliper body will have a brake pad retention screw here. The bleed port screw is located here on the caliper body. The lever bleed port screw is located here on the lever. To start, we will prep our brakes, the syringes, and all of our supplies. Remove the brake lever from the handlebar. Using a zip tie or the strap of the BKM 1.2 syringe holder, connect the lever to the bar so that the lever sits vertically. Secure the bike in the repair stand so that the air bubbles can travel upwards the whole way up to the lever. For front brakes, there's already a consistent uphill travel from the caliper to the lever. For rear brakes, it may be necessary to lower the stand as you rotate the bike. A handlebar holder helps manage the bike as well. Reset the pistons to be fully in the caliper body. Remove the brake pads from the caliper. Now install one 10 mm bleed block per set of pistons. Secure bleed block with a zip tie or rubber band. Install a syringe holder above the caliper. Select the hoses with threaded fittings on both ends to attach to the two syringes. Only one end will secure into the syringe. Attach the gold M4 by 0.7 adapter to one syringe. Attach the purple M5 by 0.8 adapter to the other syringe. Fill both syringes about one third full with appropriate fluid. Hold syringes so that the air in the syringe does not enter the system. Pull back a bit to clear the tubing on the syringes, then slowly push the plunger until fluid comes up to the end of the hose. Close the hose with the clip. With those prepped, remove the bleed port from the caliper and install the syringe with the M5 by 0.8 adapter. Install in the syringe holder.
Now, install the upper syringe with the gold M4 by 0.7 adapter by removing the T10 Torx bleed port at the lever. Be sure that the O-ring is removed as well. Install into the syringe holder. Now that you have the setup prepped, it's time to start bleeding. Open both syringe hose clips. Hold the upper syringe vertically. You will start by pulling a vacuum on the caliper syringe until about 10 milliliters of fluid is added to the syringe. Now use the caliper syringe to push fluid up to the lever. Go back and forth being careful not to let any air into the system. Watch for bubbles coming out of the system. If the fluid coming out appears to be dirty, push the remaining fluid into the caliper syringe and tighten the bleed nut. Dispose of the fluid in accordance with local ordinances and begin again with fresh fluid. Do this back and forth with the fluid about four times or until you no longer see any air bubbles coming from the bleed ports. Always end on a push and not with a vacuum pulled. Close both hose clips. Remove the caliper syringe. Install the bleed port cover as quickly as possible. Clean up excess fluid with isopropyl alcohol. Unclip the lever syringe and in quick succession pull a vacuum and then push the fluid back in as you snap the lever. Do this until you no longer see bubbles coming from the lever. Again, Stop after pushing on the syringe and not with a vacuum pulled. You can now close the hose clip and remove the syringe from the lever. Reinstall the port screw with O-ring and secure. Clean up any excess with isopropyl alcohol and a rag. Now pump the brakes with force and get a feel for how the bleed went. If there is no air in the system, the lever will feel firm and you'll have about a 1 cm lever throw. This can vary slightly. If it does not feel firm, there is still air in the system and you will need to re-bleed the brakes. Reinstall the brake lever. The bolt below the lever should be tightened to 2 newton meters. Then the compression bolt should be tightened to about 1.5 newton meters. Clean the lever with a clean rag and isopropyl alcohol. Remove the bleed blocks from the caliper. Clean the caliper of any fluid. Reinstall the brake pads. Install the wheel and align pads to the rotor. See our video on pad alignment here. After bleeding, remove hose from syringe and remove adapters from the hose. Be sure that the hose clips are open and let the hoses, adapters, and syringes drain. Dispose of any leftover or dirty fluid in accordance with your local waste disposal authority. And that's how you bleed Trick Stuff Brakes. For more on brake bleeding, see our brake bleeding playlist here.